Good evening. All of you have one or the other time heard about our very lovable president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Yeah, you must be nodding your head that definitely I have heard his name. You know, once he said, I had a sparrow, but it flew away one day. Then I got a squirrel, it ran away too. Finally, I got a tree and both came together. I am just changing this very perspective of Dr. Kalam to our world, to the world of we human beings. If I say that squirrel is we humans, all living organisms and that sparrow is our nature or natural resource, then what that tree symbolizes? That tree symbolizes our life, our sustainability, our development, our being present. That is our existence in one word. So, one or the other way, when we living organisms, say particularly human beings in specific, because we are the one who use the natural resources the most, and the natural resource just tie up together in one hand then only we can witness development we can witness progress we can witness existence of all living organisms do you really know that dinosaurs were the one organisms who used to rule the world why they died they died because of there are many hypotheses being projected and proposed but if I say one of those hypotheses is there was no parallelism with their existence to that of the nature and there was the reason for being perish, for them being perish. So we shall today go into one chapter that deals with our mother nature, our very own mother our very own lap in which we were born in which we are playing in which we are fighting in which we are staying i think all of you have one or the other day has seen this quotation we have not inherited this earth from our ancestors we have borrowed it from our children it's a native american saying which is very understandable that we have not we have not taken or we have not received our world as a gift or as a token of descendants from our ancestors. No, it's not our property. It's not our right. It's not our will. We have borrowed it from our children. That is, we have borrowed it from our future generation. Our parents borrowed it from us. We have borrowed it from our children. So our nature is the right of every future generation coming one or the other day. Because my children has equal rights over the nature as I had. So children, today we shall go into a very interesting chapter of biological sciences. That is chapter 14th of your textbook, NCRT, that is natural resources. Well, before going into the very deep, in-depth understanding of the perspective that what natural resources is actually is, I would like to ask you people, what do you understand when you heard the term nature? Exactly what? There might be many thoughts coming to your mind. There might be many ideas flourishing in your engine, isn't it? So. Many of you who are watching me right now can tell that uh, nature is something green, something flourishing with serenity, something where there is birds chirping, where there is leaves fluttering in the wind. Yes, isn't it? When we say nature, the panoramic view comes out. 
one or the other day, we all have heard it from our grandparents that the nature we used to be having in our time is not the one you people are having in your time. What is the actual significance of this statement from our experienced grandparents? Yes, what you people are thinking is exactly right. Pollution, deterioration of the level of our nature. We ourselves are destroying our mother who has created us. Yes. So let us go into the very panoramic chapter that is natural resources going one by one into the detail and nooks and crannies of this chapter. Before going into the very first topic, I would just like to tell you some bits that we are going to study in this chapter. Number one is the components of the biosphere. Number two is air and correspondingly we are going to learn about wind. Next we are going to learn about the pollution of air that is air pollution. The third beat is water, the importance of water and water pollution. And the last topic is the biogeochemical cycles that govern our atmosphere, govern our nature as such. Let it be carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, uh, then oxygen cycle and so on. And lastly, there is a small discussion on the ozone because it is that layer which is very very important for us to survive. How many of you know when is the world's environment day? I will like to get the answer from you people and tell it at the end of the class. And before that I would like to tell this 16th of September was declared as the world's ozone day under the International Federation as every day due to our havoc pollution we are causing the ozone layer is getting holes bigger and bigger and that day is not far enough when we cannot move from our home without oxygen mask. So please think and work accordingly. If two trees are being cut, one tree should be planted. Let's go into the chapter that is natural resources.